Hello again, welcome to MBS History. This episode is going to be a short review and small tutorial on the AAA Axes and Allies game, Game of Thrones, aka A Song of Ice and Fire. Now if you'd like to see how to play Axes and Allies in general, where to get this game, it is free to download, where to find all the maps, or I think it is over 50 of the maps, you'll click on this card right now, where I have a tutorial on the basics of Axis and Allies, because this is an Axis Allies game. Once you have gotten all that, you will open it up, select map. And this is very important. This might be confusing. The game that you want, which I'm playing right now, is called A Song of Ice and Fire. There does happen to be a game called uh, Game of Thrones. I think I have it, yes, over here. Don't play that one. It's not as good, and there hasn't been that much work put into it. So a song of ice and fire, as you can see here, is what you want. You open it up. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I will be playing everybody. Boom. First thing that comes up. Okay, so let's start off with um, the map. So, you're clicking over here, showing players. Let's go through the list of the playable uh, factions. Night's Watch, as you can see here in the black. You have the Targaryen all the way over here. Notice by the dragons. Greyjoy all the way over here. The free folk are above the wall in this really ugly orangey color. The Dothraki are this, I guess it's teal color. Arryn or Arryn. Arryn, I believe. This, uh, other blue teal color. The Tullys, uh, this blue color, right in the middle of the map. The Martells, over here in Dorne, in this really nice little orange color. The Baratheons are in yellow. The Starks, of course, are white. The North, quite a large amount of territory. The Tyrells are in green, over here. The Lannisters are in this rose color. I actually think the Baratheons and the Lannisters should have switched colors. It would have made more sense. Uh, they have King's Landing as well as uh, Castle Rock and all that. Uh, the Free Cities are the pink. And the Others. Um, the Others, you can't see them right now. On round five, they start to appear, and I'll explain how it works, but they will be exclusively here. And that's the only place they can spawn. They're a special faction in this, and I do not recommend playing them. They are playable, though. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of gray. These are neutral units. They're computer... Uh, they just stand there. They don't actually do anything. They're territory up for grabs. There you go. Now, the best way to start this would be to explain the units. So each faction has special units. I'm going to go through the special units first because <clears throat> it's simply easier to do that and then talk about general units that everyone has. So you can click on unit help. It'll give you this nice big thing. And we start with Night's Watch. Oh, actually, sorry, excuse me. You'll go to game notes. Yes. And we're going to start with the special units. Uh, okay, well, it shows you here's a common unit, so you'll notice there's castle. Castles are built. Castles require uh, siege weapons to be taken down. If you do not have siege weapons, it is almost impossible to penetrate them. You lose a lot of men. There's also walls, which is a smaller version of castles. I'm not going to go through all the stats of everything because there's just too many units. Uh, everyone gets peasants, I believe. Uh, cell swords are just a stronger version of peasants. They have three attack and three defense. Archers, every faction has archers. As you can see here, they have defense depending on the terrain. There is differences of terrain in this game. Uh, usually, every, I think everyone has knights, maybe not Dorthraki. Uh, siege weapons, trebuchets and catapults, and the various naval forces. Uh, you can see there. Now for special units that are unique to their factions. The Knights Watch get Northmen, very good unit, and Direwolf. Uh, Direwolf, you'll see here, I don't know if it shows it, it takes two hits to kill them. That would that's awesome, to be honest. Uh, Targaryens have the Unsullied, of course. Very good unit. Kingsguard. And Dragons. Dragons take two hits to kill, and they roll twice. And they have the most ridiculous stats in the game. Uh, sh you only get, I think, two or three. 
if I'm not mistaken, and that covers the entire game. Uh, the Greyjoys get the Iron Raiders, and they get better ships. Uh, these ships can bombard. If you know your Axis and Allies, this makes much more sense. If you're completely new to this, I'll try and explain it, but I don't want to go into too much lengths about the rules of Axis and Allies. It'll make this video way too long. Uh, we won't go into the objectives, but basically each faction has certain objectives they can make. Uh, if you take over certain territories, it gives you more money per turn. And these are specific to what faction you're playing. So if you're um, the Greyjoys, it's around your territory. If you take some of the mainland, I imagine that's their uh, objectives. And yes, it looks like that's the case. Uh, the Free Folk get Mammoths, two hits to kill, which are awesome. Giants, same thing. So the Giants are more offensive, as you can see here, Mammoths more defensive. And they have Wildlings. Supportable means that uh, certain units can support other units, it just gives them a bonus, like an extra attack. Dothraki have slaves. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Uh, horse archers, horse lords, blood rider, call. Oh, that's a lot of movement. Makes sense. Uh, Aaron is mountain clansmen. That kind of uh, sucks. Yeah, they don't get much. That makes them unique. The Tullys don't really get anything. No, they don't get special units. Martell gets spearmen, horse archers, and a unique boat. Baratheon get King's Guard, which we've already seen. The Starks get Mountain Clansmen, Northmen, Northmen. Why does it say Northmen? Anyways, Darewolf, Direwolf, uh, similar to the Night's Watch. And you only get a few Direwolves. You can't build them. Lannisters, Gold Cloak, Giants. It's interesting. And King's Guard. Uh, free cities, slaves, of course. Water Dancer, supportable, unsullied. And the Faceless Man. That's pretty cool. Two hits to kill. Uh, go down here. And then to explain the others. So the others cannot build. And you will only see units for the others starting on round five. It actually takes quite a while. The way the others work they have two units, whites and others. One other, after every turn, will spawn a white, and you get one other after each round. So as you can imagine, you just exponentially get extremely big. And you could be thinking, well, they would be easily destroyed, you just take care of them right away. I'll explain why that's not the case, and it's quite interesting in this game. The others spawn in a territory that nobody can walk into, so you can't attack them unless they leave that territory. So if you were playing the others, you would just simply sit there, gather enough troops, and then just roll over everybody. And you could technically do this, although I don't think you can build ships, so you can't technically... I, I don't know if you can technically win the game, but if you take all of this continent, then you just say you won, because you would be pretty unstoppable. I wouldn't recommend playing them. It's slow, boring, it doesn't make sense, because this game is actually more about diplomacy than actually attacking, and I'll show how that works. So like all Axis and Allies games, you get resources, you know, money per turn, you have combat movement, non-combat movement after that, etc, etc. But each round actually starts with diplomacy. And diplomacy is the most important part of this game. So as you can see here, um, if I was playing the Night's Watch, the first thing you have to do is do politics. The way politics works in this game is unique for Axis and Allies. You can see it's a very large map. So you're going to see uh, the status of you against everybody else in this game. Like, let's look at the others. You're always at war with the others. You can't choose to do anything with them. Uh, I happen to be in a ceasefire with a few, and I do not have an alliance with anybody. The way that works, you have certain stages of diplomacy. So you can't outright attack somebody unless you are already at war with them. So the stages work like so. If you are um, completely neutral to a faction, you could propose open borders. If that faction, that turn says yes to open borders, the next round you could propose to have an alliance. What open borders means is you can just walk over the same territory, you won't attack each other. Alliance, on the other hand, means that you cannot do uh, attack each other, you can defend and do some supporting things, etc. Uh, a ceasefire is completely neutral. Once you're on ceasefire, you can declare war. 
if you have or if, if you are currently in open borders you must i believe go to ceasefire and then declare war the purpose of this for the game is that you can't just go to war all the time you can actually see your enemy kind of a turn before deciding to attack you or not but i mean nonetheless you will know if someone's going to attack you i mean if the, if you were playing the Greyjoys and you just moved your ships just like up here let's say it's getting obvious and that next turn you might be attacking so if you're the Night's Watch, uh, let's say, where are the Starks? Uh, propose alliance with the Starks. Uh, I happen to be playing all the factions, so I'm at the Starks now, I would say yes. And then we have an alliance. So there you go, you can see now we are allied. When you ally to a faction, their relationships with other factions plays into your own. They will have to ask you before going to war with another faction. And this is where half the game is revolving around diplomacy. It might seem a little bit complicated right now, but as soon as you play it, it's extremely intuitive. And I recommend playing against the computer because it teaches you the game. And you can practice all sorts of strategies. I will say right now that this game is extremely long uh compared to any other axis and allies game i've ever played i think this is the longest it just it simply takes way too long to do a full round um now if you're looking over here we are playing the night's watch uh just to give you an idea of how a game could go it's a, it's really hard to play the night's watch uh you do have your castle walls and they would need siege weapons to break through i believe the mammoth might have some siege capabilities if you ever need to know anything about units you just go to unit help and you can look up so for instance uh, let's say i was looking up the mammoth oh it does not seem to have anything like that no you need a trebuchet so as you can see a trebuchet uh supports so you can see one artillery power to three allied units so it supports three allied units that are supportable so if you check your units it should say if it's supportable or not or okay i guess all units are just supportable uh, that must be the case uh yeah uh, so if you are going to take over anything that has a wall or a castle and you are limited to where you can build walls or castles in this game You will always require siege weapons why you can see over here There's a bottleneck you can build walls in this territory, but I don't believe you can build walls just about anywhere Or maybe uh, possibly you can build walls anywhere you want, but you can't build castles anywhere you want other things to note about this game. I can't do a full playthrough, I'm sorry. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, I usually do a full playthrough. This game is simply far too long. And I also apologize, I believe you can hear my parrot. I'm trying to limit her from saying things. That's why she's so close. My recommendations if you're going to play this game is to play against the computer, like I said before, and start off as either the Starks or the Targaryens. They have it a little bit easier than most factions. As you can imagine, playing the Tullys is an absolute nightmare. Your relationship is you're already at war with Lannisters. You're lukewarm with them. Uh, Baratheons, you could go to war at any moment. And the Veil vale can attack you round two, I believe, right away. You do happen to be in good terms with the Starks, but that can change depending on how things go. Playing the Free Folk is a nightmare. It's very hard to survive because the others, as you would gather, eventually show up in round five and they make your life a living nightmare. It's impossible to play as a Night's Watch. I have tried, it is, it's simply impossible. You just, you don't have enough resources because you have a very small territory, whereas the Starks have enough to just roll over you and the Free Folk will hurt you and you're stuck between two big rocks, as you can imagine. Lannisters have it pretty good, even though they're split up. Anybody who has uh, naval vessels is better off too because they have a lot more options. If you were to play the Greyjoys, for instance, you can pick and choose where you can raid. And as I said before, if you look, there are objectives to get more money. And we'll just look at some of those now. Uh, ooh, sorry, Greyjoy. So you can see there's certain territories that give you money per turn. So if you if you control three in the five capes, if you know, let's see if this is as you can see all these names, these refer to territories right here. So you have Cape Kraken, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. So the more you take over, it seems, these territories, the more exponential your money becomes per turn. And the more money you have, the more units you can buy. And that's the whole purpose of this game. The way the game plays out is you 
choose who to have an alliance with and you try and pit that person to windle down somebody else so let's say you were playing the starks which i have many times keep your alliance with the tullies have your open borders take down the veil that's usually what i try and do you can do that actually navally by attacking through here or uh, try to go after the Greyjoys together. It's a little bit more difficult. The Greyjoys have an excellent uh, defensive strategy by just hunkering down and waiting. And their boats are superior to yours. <laughs> Much more superior. It's very hard to try and get in there because they would know a turn ahead and they can just build up their fleet just to hit you in a turn. Um, from my point of view, I have never played the Targaryens, but just watching how every game unfolds, the Targaryens seem to just roll over everything and nothing can stop them. Uh, the free cities always seem helpless. The Dothrakis usually pummel the free cities from almost every time I've played this game. Oh, let's look into more of the nitty gritty. Oh, after you do your diplomacy, so let's say I'm done my politics, you can buy tech coins. This is like in all Axis and Allies games, and you would choose of these three. So you're paying five dollars per turn. It's to get an upgrade. The upgrades are listed here, and I won't go through them all, but uh, heavy armor, certain units get defense, improved training, you, you, you get the picture. If you played Axe Analysis, you know where this is going. Uh, what else is necessary for this game? You can tell I didn't script this. Uh, overall, if I'm just giving a review, this game has a lot of work put into it. It still needs more work, and it's still being updated surprisingly i think that i've seen the team update this not too long ago uh the others i don't love how it works i think they could have changed things up with them but they are a playable faction which is kind of cool because i think at the beginning when this game first came out it was just a computer and it just kind of spawned it didn't know what it was doing uh overall the computers know what they're doing uh, like most Axis and Allies games, when the AI is faced with doing things navally, it gets a bit wonky. They don't always know where to land and such. But other than that, it's surprisingly a challenge. If you put the computer to hard, I find it's pretty difficult to win in this game. All the factions are pretty balanced, except, like I mentioned, the Night's Watch and the Free Folk. It just seems like it's a losing battle. Unless you maintain an alliance, let's say you're playing with a friend and they're the Stark and you just agree you're not going to kill each other, then perhaps you have a better chance, but it's it's sketchy. If you're playing by yourself against computers, it's impossible. Uh, the units, as you can see, I don't know if I went through the list of uh, all common units. They're pretty much the same for every single faction. I think some factions just don't have one or two of a select unit. Like, Targaryens obviously don't have... No, they do have Kingsguard. Never mind. Uh, nothing too fancy there. Uh, naval units only move two, like any other Axis Allies game. The only flying unit, I guess, would be dragons. There's nothing else. And I don't even think... You know, they, they do say it's an air unit. Okay, it's notified. So you can fly over certain territories. There are different territories. Like, this is wood. So you can see it says in the bottom forest. Uh, I don't know if they have a list of the territories. That might help. Let me see if I can find it. Common units, players. Oh, I don't think they have any. They don't seem to have a list anywhere. Oh well. So there's uh, hills, forest, uh, just normal. There's road. Uh, certain obstacles you can't go over. Anything you can't go over is usually indicated by the maroon red. Uh, the sea is expansive and it's easy to travel because it's, as you can see, they're big territories. There's not too much else to say. I recommend this game if you like the game Diplomacy, if you've ever heard that one. This game's similar. It's, yeah, I would argue it's pretty similar. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you like Game of Thrones, which is. A Song of Ice and Fire, which is going to make this video very confusing for all of you, because I imagine I'm going to have to title this A Game of Thrones for all the plebeians who never read the books or don't know the actual name of the series. And such. That's just me crying about things. Never mind. 
Uh, there's not much more to say. I'm really happy to make these videos. Uh, they seem very popular. Every time I do an Axis and Allies video, I get a relative amount of views. And um, if you'd like to know anything else, please just you know tell me in the comments if you're interested in other maps because there's any map you can think of. There's Star Wars. I think there's a map for Dune. Uh, Starship Troopers. There's a map. Uh, you know, all your classics, World War One, Vietnam, Cold War, all the World War II variations, of which there's a hundred, so many. I can cover all of these. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing them, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. I know I didn't do a playthrough, and I'm sorry. It's just a short review and tutorial, uh, but that's what it's going to be. Enjoy playing this. And again, in the links and description, you can see where to download it, how to find the map. And if you need to know how to play the game more extensively, look at my first video. I think I'll put a card again here on how to play Axis and Allies. This has been MBS History. Hello.